Hi there and welcome back. This is our sixth video and the final video from our Final Cut Pro 10.1 basic video editing series. Now I'd like to talk to you and show you what favorites are. Um, observe this clip over here. This is a really long clip. It's about seven minutes long. Um, from the time we started shooting this video, uh, we didn't end it until our quadcopter landed, which is seven minutes later. And in this part of the video, there are many clips or many parts which are not nice or I don't like it. So out of this long, continuously long video clip, I like certain parts of it. So what I can do is to set favorites for parts or range of this video. Um, what I'll do is I'll scrub around to see which parts that are really nice. Um, let's have a look at this place. Okay, I'll press I to set my in point and I think I'll just scrub forwards and skim over to here. Now let's set an out point by pressing O. Okay, this part of the range, I will press F and immediately you will see that there is a green bar at the top. Now that's how we set a favorite in a clip. I'll do it again. I'll set an in point here and an out point over here. And then I'll quickly press F. Okay, so I've set two favorites in this clip. Now I'll go over to my uh, clip browser and select favorites. Okay, you will notice that there are two clips over here and they both have a green bar at the top. Now this green bar says that, shows that these two clips have been favorited. So what this means is it allows you to pick part of the clip that you really like, especially part of a long clip where a lot of um, parts are not useful. You know, like for example, the takeoff over here isn't really nice. So only, I don't want to, be working through a long clip so I can set my favorites. Okay, and how do I clear them if I don't like favorites? I'll just go over to my favorites over here and let's say I don't like this clip to be in my favorites. So all I need to do is just go down to my toolbar here and just click remove ratings. And there you go, the favorite is gone. Okay, next I will show you how to do slip and slide. Uh, slip and slide are great shortcuts and workflows that will save you a lot of time during editing. Okay, now let's play back a little bit over here. Okay, I noticed that uh, I started my lobster shot um, at this at its really long, really long an antenna. So what I like to do is I don't want to see so much of its antenna. Not so much of this. I like to see the lobster from its face over here. So what you normally do is you will, let me delete this. Okay, you will shorten this part to where you can see the lobster's face over there on the second screen. And then you will lengthen this part, right? So what you get is something that looks like this. Now, how many steps did that take? More than four, five? So that was a very long process. And you had to delete two transitions which were very nicely placed. And you weren't sure how long you are going to lengthen the entire edit. What if your producer tells you, this is, this is the, the correct duration for your entire video. So by lengthening and shortening the clip, you're actually messing around with your final duration. Now, what you can do is to slip a clip. To slip the clip, it will not change the duration of your clip. Your clip stays in the same position in the storyline. You're just changing the content. So to do that, I will go to my toolbar. I will select Trim, shortcut T. I'll go over to the middle of the clip that I'd like to slip. And then I'll just drag. Now, the first screen over there, you'll see a one screen over here and another screen over there. So this, this, this is a what we call a two-up display. So I will slide 
The left screen represents your in point or the beginning of your clip while the right side represents the out point or the end of your clip. So too much antenna, too much antenna, too much antenna. I'll just trim, trim, trim or rather slip, 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 slip. Okay, there we go. So the clip stays in the same place, the duration is the same, and only the content has been changed. Right, we've learned how to do slip. So now let's learn how to do slide. To do a slide, I'll have to throw away this uh, transition so that you can see clearly what is happening. Now, what is sliding? For example, if you'd like to move this clip further in here, so what you do is you will shorten this clip's duration, but at the same time, you've reduced the overall duration of your video, so you will have to lengthen this final clip over here. Now, that took a bit of time. So um, with slide, it's really easy. Go back to your trim, tool and do this hold down your option key go to the middle of this the clip that you like to slide and click and drag look at that so this clip that you are sliding main, maintains its duration the clip you are sliding maintains its duration while changing the out point of the clip on the left and changing the in point on the clip on the right so I'll hold on my option key. The magic here is holding down your option key while using your trim tool. So you click and drag. So that is how you do a slide. This will save you loads of time and effort. Next technique I'll show you is rolling. Okay, rolling does this. I'll select my trim tool again by pressing T. I'll move my trim tool to the middle of two clips to the cut points, right? These are cut points. And then I'll select and do this. So essentially you are lengthening the in point of one clip while shortening the out point of the other. Basically you're changing the in and out of two adjoining clips. There you go. The figure up there shows um, how much you have shortened or lengthened. So that is roll. Now, to find out how long this clip is, I'll select it, I'll press Ctrl D, and over here it shows 456. 4 seconds, 56 frames, based on a 50 frames per second timeline. Okay, now your producer tells you, um, or you decide you want this clip to be 6 seconds long. So, you can type in 6.0, and there you go, it lengthens the clip to be 6 seconds like you requested. Okay, let's have a look at this clip. I'll press Ctrl D, 648. What if you want it to be only 3 seconds long? So without touching anything else or pressing any other key, type 3.0. There you go. Now this clip is 3 seconds long. Okay, let's mess around further. Now the last clip, let's see, the last clip looks pretty good for a longer clip. So I'll click on this clip, type Ctrl D, and I'll change it to 7.0 seconds. Okay, so this clip becomes 7 seconds long. Now one of the coolest things about Final Cut Pro 10 is color matching. So to do a color match, meaning the clip over here, I'd like it to follow the color of this clip, my first clip. This looks good. I, I'm very satisfied with this clip's color, but this clip was shot in the daytime and it just looks out of place. Right? From evening. And then suddenly it becomes like we shot it in the morning or in the middle of the day, which is what we did. So I'd like this clip to match this clip. Which part? This part. I'll click click on it. And then it will add in the color. You can apply match. Okay, to go a little bit further, 
Um, when I go to my video properties in the inspector window, uh, you notice that in my color correction, nothing has changed. So color matching works independently of the color correction. Do remember that. So I can readjust all my settings again. For example, I could reduce my exposure here, make it a little bit darker or brighter. And then I could change my colors even more. Or maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe like that. So my mid-tones, maybe my mid-tones a little bit. Right? Yeah. So they work independently of each other. Okay. Well, it still looks like it's shot in the midday. Okay, let's um, maybe a little bit reddish, not so much green. Okay, I'm going to add a cross dissolve. So I'll go to my transitions, oops, transitions browser. I'll choose a cross dissolve, put it over here. Now you see the orange line has come back again, so I'll just let it play. There was a little bit of stuttering over there. Okay, now let's share this. And as promised in the previous tutorial, I'll show you more uh, sharing options. So I'll go to my sharing here. Now I'd like to add a destination. This is basically to create a template. Previously, I did a, just a simple share. Now let's add a new destination. Uh, let's do a YouTube one. So I'll click on the YouTube icon. I click and uh, save it as a template. Okay, so you've got to enter your account name, you've got to enter your password. After that, you do get to select whether you want to upload 4K HD, uh, would you like better quality or a faster encode, meaning smaller file size. And then you do get to select, of course, you want it to be public to get more views and what category you'd like it to be in. Okay, so if I were to close this, I'll go to my sharing button over here. I have my YouTube. Okay, let's add another destination. Now, let's say you want a file that you can be proud of, as in you want to keep it, you want to archive it. So, I will go to my export file. This one pretty much lets you do anything. Uh, have your own setting. So, I'll go to format, video and audio. And video codec, I can choose. Now, the ProRes are the highest quality you can get on a Mac. So if you want, well, this will give you a really insanely huge file. So unless you want that, I would recommend something else, maybe uh, Apple ProRes 422. It will still be a really big file, or you can go for H.264. Okay, so that would be your archive setting. Or Okay, let's say you've got a hard disk. Okay, I'll click on this, give it a name, mastering. I'll close this. So when you go to your sharing button over here, you've got mastering. So let's add another one and export file again. Let's do a, uh, well, you'd like to send this to your client. Uh, maybe you'd like to use a uh, sharing program. You want to send it to Dropbox, for example. You don't want the file to be too big, but you'd like uh, good quality so your client can view it. So let's go for video and audio. No, we'll go to web hosting or computer. Let's go web hosting. Okay, you've got faster encode or you've got a multi-pass here. This will take a little bit longer. And then you can choose. Would you like a smaller, uh, a file that is smaller in dimension and of course smaller file size or would you go for the full Monty 1920 by 1080? So that's really up to you. Um, I'll give it a name, web, upload, alright, close it, and you can, there you go, you can start your web upload right away, as in you can save it as a web ready file, and then you can upload to the, you can upload to Dropbox, for example, okay, whether you render this or not before you share does not really matter, because when you choose one of these, Final Cut Pro will render all of this for you. But if you still want to see a nice smooth playback, just go down here, I'm repeating myself, and you go down to playback, 
background render, close this, and watch the background render here. I'm going to leave my mouse. There you go, it's rendering. For the final technique of this tutorial, I'll show you how to stabilize your video in the quickest way possible. So let's have a look at my Kaiju Lobster here again. Okay, Lobster seems to be doing fine. So let's look at the overhead view of this. Uh, very windy day. So the quadcopter had to go through a lot of turbulence. Um, that resulted in a little bit of a shaky footage. Yeah. So I will stabilize this footage, but first of all, I'd like to make this footage, this clip a little bit longer. So now it's three seconds, I'll set it to four seconds. Yeah. Okay, now to stabilize this footage, I'll go over to my inspector. Remember, you can trigger it by pressing this button over here. So the inspector, I'll go down to stabilization, click on it, and You'll notice that Final Cut Pro 10 is showing analyzing for dominant motion. So what we can do is wait for it to complete that method. And then we can go on to have a look at how our footage looks like. So I'll wait for a little while. It's not going to take that long. And we should see smooth motion coming up, coming up real soon. Okay, so let's do a bit of a playback. Go. really nice really smooth you can further adjust the settings over here you can choose automatic well by default it's automatic you can choose inertia cam or you can go for smooth cam but I'll leave that for another tutorial where we will cover more techniques with that I thank you so much for following us from chapter 1 all the way to chapter 6 Thank you so much for following our video tutorials. I look forward to creating more tutorials for all of you. Have a great day everyone. See you soon. If you prefer to attend a course, sign up for a class by visiting our website. Click on our training and workshops tab and select a course and then register online. At wolfangdigital.com, we even offer personal one-to-one -one training. Our classes are kept small with a maximum of 5 students per class. You get lots more personal attention from your trainer and your lessons become much more effective. We look forward to seeing you in class.